Hello wonderful person and welcome to What The Math. This is Anton and today we're going to do a little experiment using meteorites and we're also going to talk about some recent news from February of 2016 when a meteorite visited our planet but you may have not known about it. Welcome and enjoy the video. <laughs> So on February of 2016, uh, there was a little visit from a guest to our planet and this is what actually happened. Right in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, there was actually an asteroid or a meteorite that uh, approached our planet and then smacked into it, producing a huge explosion. And the name of this meteorite for this particular simulation is going to be Rocky because for obvious reasons it's a rock and it's... It's coming to our planet. Anyway, so uh, what happened was that um, unfortunately NASA actually didn't really know about it and didn't announce anything, but right in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, this particular meteorite, when it landed on our planet, produced an explosion equivalent to Hiroshima atomic bomb explosion. It was um, approximately 13,000 um, ton, which is very similar to Hiroshima bomb that was uh, dropped on Japan um, during the Second World War. And here it comes, and it's about to smack into our planet and produce that explosion that unfortunately we'll probably not see in this game because it's too small to create anything and there you go boom and so that explosion was not very impressive but um, interestingly uh, some newspapers actually were able to post an article about this uh, meteorite and actually talked about how um, even though this doesn't really compare to the Chilabinks explosion which you see on the screen right now when um, a meteorite in 2013 uh, landed somewhere in the middle of Russia I believe it was actually somewhere right here-ish um, it actually produced a huge explosion uh, equivalent to 440,000 ton of uh, TNT and that's obviously uh, several times more than Hiroshima atomic bomb uh, but um, that explosion was caught on camera, but this one was in the middle of the ocean, so nobody really saw it, nobody reported it, and even the fishermen that were in the area didn't really see anything. But at least now you know that it actually happened, because I think it's pretty cool, and I think uh, these events don't actually happen very often. As a matter of fact, the event similar to the one in Chelyabinsk in Russia um, would only occur something like once every hundred years, so we might not even see another explosion like that for many, many years. Now these meteorites actually have an, a name and you can actually see some fragments exploding in different areas on, around our planet. Um, but uh, these meteorites are called bolite and bolite refers to a rock that enters from outer space and explodes in the atmosphere. And when it explodes it creates a lot of energy and uh, usually that energy is um, equivalent to an at atomic bomb. And that's because of the mass and the velocity that this meteorite or this rock travels with. Now. We're going to do something of, uh, of uh, an experiment today. So we're going to just throw different rocks at different speeds and see what happens. So I was actually wondering, so what do you think would happen if we were to take a very, very, very large asteroid? As a matter of fact, let's take the largest asteroid in our solar system. And instead of throwing it at our, our planet, we're just going to place it on the surface. Basically, imagine if the largest asteroid in our solar system came for a visit, but then it kind of stopped right before our planet um, or right in front of it and instead of colliding it would just land gently on it so let's see what happens and uh, obviously the largest asteroid here would be of course uh Ceres which is here it is uh well technically Ceres is a dwarf planet but it's also the largest object in the asteroid belt and um it was classified as an asteroid for many 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 years so um it is to, to me at least is a, an asteroid it's an asteroid uh, but it may it may not be an asteroid um, by certain uh, definitions it's it, because it's technically it's also a dwarf planet so let's place it somewhere in in north america we're gonna place it somewhere right here really really close to north america so right around here now i'm going to l watch its speed as well we're gonna zoom in and watch what happens so we'll see how it's actually touching our planet already uh, and we're going to make sure that its speed stays very very low and just watch what happens see if there's any explosion so this is a huge mass actually uh, the mass here is uh, almost 10 times uh, 10 to the power of 20 which is um, only 
about 10,000 less massive than Earth. So it's actually a pretty massive object. Uh, but we're just going to make sure that it doesn't go too fast. We're going to always decrease its speed uh, as soon as it tries to accelerate. Because it's going to be accelerating really fast due to the gravity of our planet. So watch the speed and see how it's already increasing. So And it's slowly moving toward our planet. So we're going to just move this down to zero again. It's going to slow it down and move it down to zero again. And here we go. So it's moving toward our planet, but it's, its velocity is increasing dramatically fast. So I have to keep changing it all the time. But you can kind of see there's some explosions going on. There's fragments going off. It's moving at almost a kilometer per second already. Um, and basically, it's just gently falling on the surface of our planet. And let's just let it go. Let's, we're going to let it go, let it crash. And you can kind of see that it's slowly being absorbed into our planet. But uh, nothing major in terms of collisions is actually happening. Let's actually just decrease this a little bit. Make this zero again. And there we go. So very, very gentle collision slash landing on the surface of our planet. So this is kind of if a, a giant spaceship from outer space with like aliens and stuff came to our planet and decided to just land on it very, 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 very gently. So this is what would probably happen. Except, of course, this is actually now moving at a 2 km per second velocity. But nevertheless, um, the damage here is not very dramatic. I mean, there's fragments exploding, and there's uh, a sudden crater formation here, even though technically there was actually no crater, and this would probably create a mountain instead. Uh, but so some of the ocean has retreated, there's a bit of an explosion here in the middle, um, and if I accelerate time a little bit, and if we actually change the view to... Um, optimize for climate view. There we go. We can now see this in real time as it basically changes on the surface of our planet. We're going to accelerate time a little bit. And basically, here we go. So, uh, Florida is a little bit toasty, and I think Cuba is gone, and so is most of the Mediterranean. Uh, Mexico is flooded, and that's about it. The rest of the planet, though, it's actually doing well. And uh, as a matter of fact, the surf surface temperature has barely increased at all. So, why has it not really caused any damage? Well, that's because of the velocity. Now, when you're measuring uh, any kind of energy, to measure energy, you have to multiply mass by velocity, but you are actually multiplying velocity twice. As a matter of fact, the formula for energy related to velocity is mass times velocity squared. So, it's actually a lot more likely that an object moving faster but with a lower mass would produce a much, much higher energy than a bigger object moving at a very, very low speed. So what I'm trying to say here is that if I were to take a very tiny object and I were to smack it into Earth again, it would very likely produce a much, much, much larger explosion or at least an equivalent explosion to this. Now, this is what actually happens here. So Florida is back to be normal. Uh, Cuba is nowhere to be found. There's a tiny piece left here and I think Haiti is gone as well and a few other islands in the Mediterranean are all basically inside this crater here. I think this is kind of interesting to observe because many people assume that if you, if a massive object actually tries to um, collide with our planet but it doesn't um, move fast enough, most people will assume that it would be a total destruction of our planet but that's not actually true. Uh, so if, if an object is moving really slow it will actually very likely cause almost no damage at all. All right, so let's try this again, but this time what we're going to do is we're going to throw a smaller object. Let's just say an object that's about, I don't know, uh, 100 meters uh, in, in diameter. Uh, this this was a, a, a very large object. This object was about 476 kilometers or about 320 miles in, in radius. Um, now we're going to do the same with uh, an object that's uh, of a radius about 50 meters. So basically much, much, much smaller. So let's do this again. We're going to launch an object, but we're going to change its parameters. So it's only going to be um, 100 meters in radius, um, or we can, I guess we can make it less, but I think 100 meters is pretty good. And we're also going to change its velocity. And so let's just say that this is a, a, a rock that's on 100 meters in, ra in radius that is moving at uh, close to the speed of light, at 99% of the speed of light, which is basically you know, pretty close to the speed of light. So basically, imagine there's um, some sort of a, a catastrophic event in the nearby solar system, and it launches a rock that moves really, really fast toward our planet. And let's see what happens. So it's coming toward the North America, and boom. And that was really fast, even though I slowed down time dramatically, but look at that. Look at the uh, amount of um, energy that's already generated. It has already caused 
uh, at least half as much damage as the series did when it actually landed very gently. And the explosion is actually increasing. And so what this suggests is that um, when any kind of a meteorite or any kind of asteroid comes to our planet or, you know, basically approaches our planet, it's not just the mass we should be looking at, it's also the relative velocity. So as a matter of fact, this explosion is much bigger than the one we had for Ceres. Ceres was only about this big. Look how big this thing is. This is already bigger than before. If I accelerate this more, I might actually increase its size even more. And it also uh, may have changed the temperature. We don't really know. Oh yeah, it's it definitely changed the temperature of the planet as well uh, by a few um, few decimals, few uh, almost almost a degree hotter now. But look at the size of that explosion. That is a huge explosion. This would destroy North America. There would be nothing left here if an object that's much much smaller than Ceres approached our planet at close uh, to the speed of light. And if I accelerate this even more, we might see even more explosions and more damage. But the shockwave alone here would probably destroy everything. And so that's obviously because of that formula I talked about before, M multiplied by V square. So the V square part is really what's causing so much energy to be released here. And as you can see, uh, a big part of um, southern states are basically gone. But Florida survived. Florida is happy because it's it survived this time. Anyway, so that's basically um, what I wanted to show you. But before we actually finish this video, let's do another one. Let's just do another one for fun. Now, um, there's actually a comet that comes to visit our planet. A very, very famous comet. You may have heard of it. And it's called Halley's Comet. It's actually right here. And uh, Halley's Comet uh, visits our planet every 75 to 76 years. Last time it was here, it was in 1986. And so by the time you much, much older and... Uh, I hope I'm still alive as well. It will visit our planet again. Um, and so um, imagine Halley Comet, but for some unknown reason, accelerates and actually, you know, comes to our planet. For some reason, it uh, accelerates to close to the speed of light and decides to visit as well. So what do you think will happen? Um, what do you think will actually occur if Halley Comet smacks into our planet? Um, at, at close to the speed of light. And Halley Comet's uh, size is about 5 kilometers. Its mass is... Okay, it doesn't actually say here, but it's um, it's not very heavy, but it's also not very light either. So its mass is um, 4 times 10 to the power of 14. So it's about uh, something like 10 billion times lighter than um, our planet. So what we're going to do is let's actually just try to... Um, smack it at the regular velocity so this is at 10 kilometers per second just regular launch and see what happens if it actually crashes on our planet so it's about uh, five kilometers in size so it will very likely cause some damage may produce a relatively large crater as well and here it comes and here it comes landing somewhere around japan so let's see what happens to japan if Halley comet uh, lands at a regular velocity so this is just a speed of about 12 kilometers per second uh, very, uh, very close to the actual velocity of many, many asteroids that smack into our planet. And so there's a bit of an explosion. It will most likely produce a tsunami that will most likely damage Japan. But uh, other than that, it really doesn't do as much as you think it would, right? This would obviously not cause extinction. This would probably not really cause uh, dramatic changes in climate. It may ch change the climate for a year or two, but not not for a long time so all right so that's that's interesting so let's do this again at close to the speed of light and so make your predictions what do you think will happen to our planet if it smacks at this velocity and here it comes and boom all right now this is actually um decelerated a little bit so i'm going to change this to real time i'm gonna go one second per second and uh we hit uh, i think it was either saudi arabia or possibly jordan uh, but somewhere in the Middle East. So just watch what happens if this actually happens at the speed of light. And observe the beautiful destruction of our planet with the crazy, crazy amount of shock waves and a very, very huge fireball that forms within literally seconds after the collision. Now, this is so massive that it is just unbelievable. And this is all from a little rocket. The actual fireball is already big uh, or as big as our planet and will most likely get even bigger. And here we go. Boom. So 
our planet will most likely undergo a dramatic change of everything. Uh, its surface will actually reach temperatures of crazy heat, uh, uh, crazy, crazy heat. And you can kind of see it happen here already. But as soon as this fireball disappears, there we go, look at that. It's melting, it's melting everywhere. The entire planet is changing. And all of this was because of the velocity of this object. So even a small object moving at crazy high speeds will cause a tremendous um, amount of destruction. And look at this beauty. The entire planet is going to basically change and turn into a molten ball. And interestingly, because of the amount of energy that was produced here, uh, here we go, molten ball. Um, if we, you'll notice that it's like fragments flying away from us. Now, these fragments were created from, from this collision, but because of the way that energy and mass works, there's actually a famous formula from Einstein, E equals mc square. It refers to the conversion of energy into matter and matter into energy. Because of the amount of energy that was released from that fireball you saw, some of this energy actually turned into matter. And some of this energy has now become an object right here that is actually bigger than our moon. So in other words, out of an object that was size of Healy Comet, we have created an object that is essentially a moon size uh, or moon sized object. And that's just mind blowing. So basically the energy that was created during this explosion created this. And that's just awesome. So that's science for you. And because this is all based on Einstein's theories, we're going to name this E equals MC square. So this is going to be our awesome new moon. Unfortunately, it's actually really far away from our Earth. And I'm, I'm pretty sure our Earth will no longer be sustainable for life. And so there you go. This is our new Earth. And we may have to get used to living here because it is going to be toasty for quite a long time. And it's actually currently at something like 1400 degrees Celsius. Anyway, so that's really all I wanted to say. But before I finish, um, there was actually one thing I wanted to mention about Halley's Comet. I was actually always wondering. So, you know, if you actually stand on this comet, and I'm talking about this comet right here, let's actually make it orbit our planet for a second. And we're going to observe everything from the Halley's Comet. So imagine you're actually standing on the surface of this comet and uh, you just want to possibly, you know, escape from it. So I was wondering, you know, if you jump up, can you actually jump out of its gravitational pull or will you be stuck on this comet and because of its gravitational pull, will not be able to escape? And so I actually did some math and I calculated that the escape velocity for Halley's Comet um, is actually, and it's actually written right here, 3.19 meters per second. Now, a normal human being, when, when he or she jumps, normally jumps at an average speed of about 3 meters per second. In other words, you're just under the escape velocity of Halley's Comet. And so if you were to jump up, you would actually go up, but then you would most likely fall back down. And it would be very difficult for you to escape Halley's Comet unless you're some sort of a basketball player that can jump higher and obviously faster. So escape velocity of Halley's Comet is actually just over an average jumping speed of an average human being. So I think that's a pretty cool fact that you can actually share with your friends that they may actually like to learn something about space and astronomy. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't and share this video with your friends. Like it if you enjoyed it. And watch out for more videos, Universe Unbox 2 videos and Space Engine videos where we're going to explore other astronomical and astrophysical stuff where you get to learn something really interesting. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Game you later and bye bye.